First, it was Cristiano Ronaldo who joined Al Nasser for around 200 million euros per year, and now it's Karim Benzema and N'Golo Kante heading out to play at Al Ittihad for an annual wage of 200 million and 100 million euros respectively. After the 2022-2023 European club football season just got over, all the clubs are preparing themselves for the next season to improve their squad. Cristiano Ronaldo's move to Al Nasir has opened the doors for many other professionals. Multiple news of big players moving to the Saudi Pro League has been topping the headlines on the internet recently. In fact, Al Hilal offered 1.5 billion euros to Lionel Messi for three years. That's a crazy sum of 500 million per season. The fees offered by the Saudi clubs are so lucrative that it's hard to reject by the athletes and other football clubs. However, what's most interesting is that Saudi teams buying prominent players isn't limited to the club's growth. The Public Investment Fund, or PIF, of Saudi Arabia soon invested in the Saudi Pro League. Having 75% control of Al Ittihad, Al Ali, Al Nasir, and Al Hilal, PIF is also the nation's sovereign wealth fund, which provides financing for commercial projects that are significant to the development of Saudi Arabian economy. You might have heard of the Line Mega Project in Saudi Arabia. PIF is the same organization that also funds this mega project worth billions of dollars. Welcome to the Financial Athlete. In this video, we'll discover how Saudi Arabia is taking over football so fast. Before we go further, we would highly appreciate if you'd subscribe to our channel to get updated on the sports business world. So, without further ado, let's dive right into this. Okay, after seeing all these big value transfers, the first obvious query that arises is the Saudi team's financial support. According to the New York Times, most of the money invested in the league and the clubs recently has come from the PIF. The PIF is no ordinary organization. The fund has signed 20-year commercial agreements worth tens of millions of dollars with the four most popular clubs in the Saudi Premier League. As a matter of fact, they own around 80% stake in the English professional football club Newcastle United. It tells us that Saudi's interest in football is not just limited to the country's clubs, but also in the global football market. In January this year, the sports intelligence agency 21st Group ranked the Saudi Pro League as the 58th best league in the world. According to several articles, Saudi Arabia wants to increase the income from their football league and make it one of the top 10 leagues in the world. And it's not difficult for them to do, as they have a lot of advantages over other competitors. Unlike European clubs, Saudi clubs have the freedom to invest without any rules, allowing them to offer high salaries and attract as many players as they want. The Saudi government publicly asserts that its sporting expansion aims to create investment opportunities, enhance public health, and develop sports infrastructure. They have set an ambitious goal of increasing the league's market value to $2.1 billion by 2030. According to Athletic.com, Saudi Arabia has ambitious plans to host 25 world championships in various sports by 2030, as officially indicated by government officials. In short, Saudi Arabia is already witnessing significant outcomes from attracting renowned players within a short period. Since Ronaldo's arrival, ticket prices have surged to 150 rials from the previous price of 10. That's a solid 15 times gain. On the other hand, attendance at Al Nasir Games is up by 143% only because of this Portuguese player. As we've briefly mentioned earlier, Messi was also offered to the league by Al Hilal for 1.5 billion euros for three years. But he rejected the offer and chose to opt for Inter Miami CF instead. In one of our previous videos about David Beckham's salary, we mentioned that there was a possibility of Messi leaving PSG. And finally, it's happening. On June 7, 2023, Messi confirmed that he would be joining David Beckham's MLS team after his contract with PSG ended. However, before making this decision, Al Hilal made a last-minute attempt to persuade Messi to sign with them. Nevertheless, Messi has since clarified that he will not move to Saudi Arabia. It was unlikely from the start as the 35-year-old had to consider what his instincts were telling him. Messi emphasized his intention to take a break from the intense public attention by stating, I'm at a point where I want to step out of the spotlight a bit, think more about my family. On the other hand, Messi's move to MLS has grabbed everyone's interest. As per Fox Soccer, Lionel Messi is poised to become the fifth highest-paid athlete annually in the United States. 
When compared to the top five sports in the US, the salary of the Argentinian soccer superstar will be lower than only four NBA stars, but higher than any player in the NFL and MLB. But here's the twist. After failing to sign Messi, Al-Hilal is now preparing to bring in the Brazilian superstar Neymar. Rumors suggest they are ready to offer Neymar a staggering yearly salary of 200 million pounds and a transfer fee of about 45 million pounds. If the deal goes through, Neymar will become the highest paid footballer in the world. This potential signing adds to the excitement of a summer filled with significant investments in the Saudi Pro League. But things might not go that smoothly. Like any other transfer of players to a new league, there are drawbacks to consider. According to Michael Goldberg, the senior vice president of sports finance at DBRS Morningstar, if Saudi Arabia continues to acquire players at an alarming rate, it could potentially disrupt the football world, especially considering the already widespread popularity of European leagues. While there are no spending restrictions on players, UEFA has recently implemented rules stating that clubs cannot exceed 90% of their annual revenues on wages, transfers, and agent fees in 2023. This limit will further decrease to 70% in 2022. Goldberg further explained, The SPL has the capability to offer much higher wages compared to MLS clubs, which could pose a threat to an essential aspect of MLS's business model. While the overall quality of play in the MLS has been rapidly improving due to investments in player development, coaching, and designated players, the gap in quality between MLS and the SPL is much narrower than that of the SPL compared to European leagues. Gulf countries like Qatar are investing in football to increase their influence. Qatar is interested in investing £6 billion in the English Premier League, which is one of the world's richest and most watched leagues. They've had talks with Tottenham Hotspur FC and have already bought a 22% stake in the Portuguese club SC Braga for £19 million. Qatar's sports fund QSI also looks at investment opportunities in Belgium, Spain, and Brazil. Furthermore, the English Premier League also has strong connections with Gulf countries. Long ago, Abu Dhabi's royal family purchased Manchester City in 2008, and since then, the club has won the Premier League six times. Manchester City has also been financially successful. Saudi Arabia's rapid takeover of football is fueled by the significant financial backing of the Public Investment Fund and its ambitious plans to elevate the Saudi Pro League status in the world. With the ability to offer high salaries and attract renowned players, Saudi clubs are making their mark on the global football market. The future of Saudi Arabian football remains uncertain, Still, with the ongoing pursuit of top players like Neymar, we can expect more exciting developments and investments in the Saudi Pro League. Only time will tell if Saudi Arabia can become a dominant force in the global game. And by the way, there are also whispers that Saudi Arabia aims to host the FIFA World Cup in 2030. Let's wait and see if they can make this dream a reality. So, what are your thoughts on today's video? Which player would you like to see in the Saudi Pro League? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. It's free, and this way you won't miss any videos of us breaking down the business behind the world of sports. See you in the next video.